Welcome to Dark Knight Films Reviews. I'm your host, Matt Spies, and today we are looking at A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, The Dream Warriors, released in 1987. Nightmare on Elm Street 3 stars Heather Langenkamp, Craig Wasson, Patricia Arquette, Robert England, Ken Sagos, Rodney Eastman, Jennifer Rubin, Bradley Gregg, Ira Hyden, Lawrence Fishburne, and John Saxon. Nightmare on Elm Street 3 is directed by Chuck Russell. Now this film was sort of a return to the series for Wes Craven. He sat out part two, of course, and he returned in this one to write the story alongside Bruce Wagner, and he co-wrote the screenplay alongside Bruce Wagner, Frank Darabont, and Chuck Russell himself. So, it's cool to have him back um, in the writing chair, at least. And then you got a really good director in uh, Chuck Russell directing this. Now, when this movie was first announced and it was coming out, MTV put the music video for the Dream Warriors on. And it made me so excited for this film. Number one, Dream Warriors was performed by one of my favorite metal bands of the 80s, Dokken. I mean, those guys are only second to Alice Cooper and Ozzy Osbourne to me at that for that time period. Um, so yeah, when I saw that music video, I thought, yeah, this is this should be freaking badass. It's got freaking Dokken doing the main uh, theme song for it and everything, you know, um, the main title song. Oh, Dream Warriors is not my favorite, uh, unlike a lot of people, it's not my favorite of uh, Dawkins' songs. I probably like uh, a lot of their other songs a lot better, like uh, Into the Fire. I think that's a much better song than uh, Dream Warriors, but I do like the Dream Warriors uh, as a song. What a nightmare. Guys. And then the movie came out, and uh, they, it's cool they brought back Heather Langenkamp, but I think in this storyline, I don't really think that her character was even really necessary in this. Um, and neither, to be honest, neither was uh, John Saxon. It's, it's like Wes Craven just wrote those characters in there for nostalgia's sake and to say, hey, I'm back in the reins writing this thing. So these are characters I created and I'm bringing them back. But uh, neither one of them really have too much that really influences this story as much as they should. Um, Craig Wasson is a great character in this, um, could have worked with just him. Um, I don't think Nancy was even necessary in this film, to be honest. Um, the new characters of, uh, Patricia Arquette as Kristen, um, Rodney Eastman as Joey. <sighs> to me, those two characters, they become two of the most important characters in the story by the last third of the movie. But before that, um, they are just biding their time, it's like. They're not really relevant to the story as much as some of the other characters are. Ken Sagos' Kincaid and Jennifer Rubin's Taryn are much better characters in this. Um, but I will say that... Uh, Patricia Arquette's Kristen and, and uh, 
about an Eastman's Joey, even before they become irrelevant to the story by the third, are much better than Ira Hayden as Will. I mean, I wasn't a fan of the Harry Potter thing then. Still not a fan of the Harry Potter thing now, so... This dumbass wizard fuck in there, trying to fight Freddy. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious when he got his ass killed myself. Sorry, kid. I don't believe in fairy tales. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> the character that I really liked a lot from the start when we were meeting all these uh, kids and everything, was uh, Bradley Greggs Phillip. And unfortunately, they uh, fucking decided just to kill his ass off right off the bat and not even make him part of the fucking Dream Warriors. Um, so that kind of pissed me off right off the bat. Um, like I said, uh, Ken Sagos is Kincaid and... and uh, Jennifer Rubin's Taryn are, are are really good um, in this, and it really sucks that uh, <laughs> Jennifer Rubin's character is this badass. She tries to fight him, and she basically goes the same route as Will. Okay, asshole. Let's dance. <laughs> And gets killed. You know, she's not even really much of a much of a threat to Freddy in this. And while we're on Freddy, uh, this is the moment where Freddy started veering toward parody. Unfortunately, I mean, he's not as bad in this as he does get in the later films. <sighs> But this was the stepping stone toward it. He is not the badass, serious, scary, grim character that he was in the second film. I think, like I said in my review of the second film, I mean, that, that is the best Freddy's ever been. The ending with uh, the big showdown between uh, Heather's Nancy and Patricia's Kristen and uh, Ken's Kincaid and uh, Rodney's Joey because everyone else is dead at this point. Um, it, it was a pretty good finale. Um, but it really sucks that these characters that you're not as invested in initially because they're not doing as much, are the ones that step in and do the most by the end with uh, Kristen and Joey. So, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, it, the, the other thing that pisses me off in the film is uh, the, the killing of uh, John Saxon's Donald. I killed you once before, you son of a bitch. I didn't like that. I mean, I didn't really give a damn about Heather Langenkamp's Nancy getting killed. Um, because to me, like I said, this was not as good. Hellraiser brought back Christy Cotton. And had a young girl that she was helping in it. Similar to this, to where you've got Patricia Arquette as this young girl that she's supposed to be helping. But I think it was much better done in Hellraiser 2. Even though the ending to that movie pisses me off badly. But I think the way that Christy Cotton was handled in that one was much better than the way that they handled the Nancy Thompson character in this. Um... So when she got killed, I just, well, whatever. So. <laughs> um, 
but Lawrence Fishburne plays in this as as, uh, as Max, and he's you could tell he was going to be a star. Um, he was he was pretty good in this in his little role that he has. He's in it quite a bit in little bits and pieces here and there. Um, but yeah, he's he's good in this, and Craig Watson is always great. Um, his his character was really cool, um, and I'm glad they didn't go the route that. I thought they were going to do when this movie first started. When the movie first started, I thought Greg Watson was going to be revealed to be like Freddy. Which would have been an interesting thing, but I've seen Greg Watson play uh, roles where he ends up being sort of a bad guy in it and everything. And, and I'm glad they didn't go that route with this film. But, uh, yeah, I think he was one of the better parts of this film. I really liked his character of Dr. Neil Gordon. My name is Neil Gordon. Pleased to meet you. There now, we've met! Now listen to me. I don't know if you care whether Nancy lives or dies, but I do! But yeah, um, it is well-directed, well-put-together by Chuck Russell, and it's pretty well-written by... Uh, Craven, Wagner, Darabont, and Russell. But um, my final rating for Nightmare on Elm Street 3, The Dream Warriors. I would give this film an 8.5 out of 10. It's not a bad film. It's, it's, it's one of the Almost one of the final good Nightmare on Elm Street movies. And it is considerably better than the original Nightmare on Elm Street, I believe. Um, but to me, the best Nightmare on Elm Street movie right now is part two. But what do you think? Do you agree with my review of this? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this video, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe, because it really does help this channel out a lot. But yeah, we are still on the, uh, the threes. We are doing the threes still. Um, so, hope you'll stick with me on this collection of, uh, third chapters. And, uh. I will see you next time if you do. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching.